Talk Show, wherever you fans welcome. Today we will be reviewing the Indianapolis Colts wide receiver room. We'll be going through number one to some of the guys that I'm more familiar with. You know, some of these guys when you get down here, to, you know, Athena, Michael Young Jr. I don't really know them too well. Samson, I don't know those guys too much. I don't know much about them. Not many will, but we're going to go through guys like Alec Pierce, Paris Campbell, Michael Pittman, Doolin, Patman, Harris, Mike Strom. Those are the guys that we're going to be going through. Even Ashton Doolin and Kiki QT. I'm familiar with them a little bit. So, yeah, this room has is such a big boom or bust room. One of the biggest boom or bust rooms in the NFL. You know, you look at Michael Pittman Jr., we know he is a... He is a medium tier one. He's a solid one. He knows nothing, you know, absolutely insane. He has a ability to make that jump with such a smart and accurate quarterback this year because um, he really bailed out ones last year quite a few times. You just put it in this kid's vicinity and he's going to bring it down. Um, very good route runner. Very strong hands. Very good character. So, not much to really talk about Michael Pittman Jr. because we know who he is right now. We know what he's about. But with the smarter quarterback, with the. With a smart quarterback, a more accurate quarterback, a more technically sound quarterback, Michael Pittman Jr. is going to thrive off of that. So, he's, you know, even more than last year. So, I'm excited to see what he's going to have in store. So, you then step back and take a look at some of these other receivers. There's a lot of question marks. A lot of question marks. Marks. We're going to start with the guy we just drafted in, Alec Pierce. So, kid from Cincinnati, very tall. Uh, you know, coming from Cincinnati, he didn't have a big route tree. And that, and that's one of the big questions that people are having. You know, you look at his route tree, and he didn't run many, many routes over in Cincy. And he never really had a 1,000-yard season in Cincy, which puzzles some people. And he had a decent quarterback that was, that is, that was supposed to go high in the draft. That was supposed to, you know, that's supposedly very talented. Um, now, do, do we know if Ritter is talented yet or not? No. But in college, he was. So Pierce had a decent quarterback, but it's mind-boggling mind boggling how he is so fast. He's big, big-time catches. He's a human highlight reel. He has the ability to make a highlight, to make a huge play every single game. And, you know, it's just kind of questionable how he has never toppled 1,000 yards in his college career. Maybe it changes in the NFL. Maybe it does. Maybe they spread the ball around more in Cincy. Maybe that was more their goal. But Alec Pierce has a chance to be a very good wide receiver. You know, how many wide receivers really get the chance to step in right away at number two and be a number two? He doesn't have the pressure of having to be a number one. Pittman's a number one. We know that. Everyone knows that. Now, Alec Pierce, he's most likely going to be a two. If Paris Campbell stays healthy, he could be the number two. But you'd rather Campbell on the inside in the slot, you know, I, you know, I mean number two in like talent-wise maybe. So you'd rather Campbell in the slot than Pierce. So, um, yeah, Paris Campbell, you know, that moves on to him. That brings us to Paris Campbell. So when healthy, this kid is electric. He is dynamic. He is our version of Debo Samuel. If he stayed healthy, he would have been the first Debo Samuel. You know, he, you know, in a Steelers game a few years ago with Phillip Rivers, we were up, you know, whatever, a few scores. Or no, I think it was, I think it was actually with Jacoby Brissett. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was his rookie year because he broke his hand, his foot, all that crazy stuff. So he had like, he had over 100 purpose yards in the first half against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that, and that was the year that, the, you know, you know, any year you get that kind of yards, you get that kind of production against that defense, that's impressive. No matter how you get it. Um, Campbell's fast. And he's 6'1". It's another mismatch nightmare. You know. So, if he gets stay healthy, he may be the most explosive outside of Jonathan Taylor. He may be the most explosive re player on this team, on this offense. That's a big gift, though. You know, last year he caught a touchdown, caught a bomb from Wentz, and he got hurt on the play. He caught a touchdown. His, oh, it, you know, it just sucks to see such a talented player not getting the ball to go his way, not getting things to go his way. But hopefully, he keeps working. You know, he, you know, he deserves to. You know, he works very hard. 
He works very hard. I wanted to see the kid make a big impact. He absolutely could. But, you know, if he's not healthy another year, I don't see it being worth him. I don't see it being worth resigning him because, you know, sometimes if you're not even on the field, then what's the point of having all that talent? No disrespect, but sometimes the best ability is the availability. So, those are kind of like the top three guys in mind right now. You go down the chart a little bit, you and you get your Desmond Patmans, you get your Ashton Doolins, you get your Mike Strange, your Kiki Cutie. So, I think Doolin and Patman will fight for four. Doolin is a very fast deep threat guy that you could bring in, you know, two or three times a game, have him run on deep routes and take a shot. Desmond Patman, on the other hand, he's not as fast. But he has been showing up in training camp. He's been lighting, no, not training camp, but mini camp, OTAs, that kind of stuff. We've heard very good things about him. And we've been hearing that the Colts and him want to make a push at wide receiver four. And he's just not wanting it. He is showing it. He's making big plays. He is working his butt off. And his development is starting to kick in. You know, all that work is starting to kick in. It's starting to show. So, I'd be down for Desmond Patton, Patton being number four. Last year in the Arizona game, he got the game-winning touchdown in a huge game. Huge game. You know, he deserves more catches. He deserves some more time. Give him more time. Give him the shot. And then you have your Mike Strons, Kiki Cuties, Michael Harris. So, my problem with Mike Strong. You know, a lot of people were asking last year why Mike Strong was not on the roster more often. That was because if you're not going to be, you know, number one, two, or three, maybe four on the culture on, on the culture receiving depth chart, you have to be able to make an impact on special teams. And Mike Strong could not provide that. So, you know, if he's not able to provide special teams help and he's a fifth or sixth wide receiver, Chris Ballard, Frank Reich don't want him on the roster. Don't want that player on the roster unless they absolutely need him. To Michael Harris, on the other hand, he's speedy, he's fast, but I just haven't seen a lot from him. You know, he wasn't on the field a lot either, so you don't really know what to say. But if he's not in the field, maybe that's telling you something. Maybe it's telling you something that he's just not performing in, you know, he just wasn't performing in practice, wasn't putting in the effort, whatever it was. And then last but not least, a wide receiver that I think is a bit underrated. That is Kiki QT. Kiki QT is very fast, very versatile. I love the kid. I think he should have played much more last season. When I seen him side him, I was really excited about Kiki QT. Very speedy. He could be that deep threat that could come in a few times a game, you know, even more than Doolin, I think. You know, if Campbell went down, I'd take QT over Ashton Doolin. I would take Kiki QT over Ashton Doolin to be that number three, to, do, to be that deep threat. Um, oh, actually, it's probably a good idea to talk about Naheem Hines' video because Naheem Hines is expected to have a much bigger role. Naheem Hines, you know, I've always, wa you know, we've always wanted to see Naheem Hines in the slot more, out wide, wherever it is. We always, you know, by the end of the season, seem somewhat disappointed by the way we use him. Naeem Hines is very dynamic, very fast. Now last year, last year was tough because when you have such a hot hand at a position like Jonathan Taylor, when he's, you know, playing the way he is, playing at such a high level, it's hard to take a player like that out. You don't want to. You want him to keep playing like that. You want him to keep going. So Naeem Hines didn't really have much to really work with last year but I feel like that this coaching staff has to do a better job of being able to be versatile being able to bring a guy to receiver that maybe could or just find different ways to use him you know they were very very predictable in Nike Mines you know they just weren't creative with him they need to find creativity with Naheem Hines so hopefully they do so you know, so you look through this wide receiver room. As I said earlier, it's a lot of boomer bust guys. Outside of Michael Pittman Jr., no one 
has shown they can be healthy, or that they can consistently be a solid wide receiver two or three. You know, Paris Campbell has a talent to be. He's not proven. He has injury issues. So you don't really know. Can you really count on him? No, you can't. So, you guys let me know what you think about this receiving room. How do you think Chris Ballard did this offseason? What do you think is going to be the biggest surprise? Is Alec Pierce going to have over 1,000 yards for the first time in his football career? Um, is Desmond Patman going to get a lot more playing time? Is Ashton Doolin going to make a big jump? Is Naeem Hines going to be our... 